Good afternoon, everybody. I'm meteorologist, KHOU meteorologist, Tim Pandagis. You may be wondering, who is this guy? I've never seen him before. I'm actually the brand new, newest member of the KHOU 11 weather team, uh, joining you all from Virginia, coming to Houston. And we're going to talk today about what's going on in the tropics. Uh, it's been a little more active than typically is this time of the year. July, as we get into early July, starts to ramp up by the later parts of the month. And of course, you get August and September, where you have the peak of the hurricane season. So far, We've got five names already down, and you may say, ah, 2020 was pretty big. Actually, Elsa, the development of that, beat out the 2020 record. Elsa was the fifth name storm, the earliest fifth name storm on record. And now it's also the first hurricane of the 2021 season. It is a category one, but there are some updates to the latest advisory that I want to share with you here. All right, here's the stats on Elsa. It's currently moving into the Caribbean Sea right now. It passed over the Windward Islands. It packed gusts up to 90 miles per hour, so it does mean business, and it's got a lot of thunderstorm activity and a lot of flooding potential with it if it impacts any land masses in the short term. Up to 85 mile per hour winds right now. That's an increase of 10 miles per hour from the 11 o'clock advisory or the 10 a.m. advisory earlier this morning. And earlier today, the recon aircraft flew into the storm and they found gusts up to 90 miles an hour. This was before they upgraded to a hurricane earlier on. There's actually a flight in there right now, but they're finding that it's not completely well organized. And a big reason behind that is how fast it's moving. It's ripping through the Caribbean over 29 miles per hour. That's very fast for a tropical system, and it's trying to keep itself up and not become tilted. A tilted system means it'll likely weaken and not strengthen very much. You need an upright, vertically built hurricane machine to kind of push its way forward and strengthen more so and completely take use of all the warm ocean waters, which it has plenty of out in this part of the ocean. This is also a little bit unusual because a storm in this part of the Atlantic Basin this time of year is typically known as the graveyard. The Caribbean is where tropical systems go to die because wind shear is typically much, much higher and that'll just tear the thunderstorm cloud tops off and rob it from its energy source. Not really seeing that. There's no evidence of wind shear in at least the next 24 to 36 hours is when this is going to be in ideal conditions to further strengthen. So we need to get to 96 miles per hour to get a new category upgrade, and that'd be a category two at 96. We're not all that far from there at 85 miles per hour. Here's a close up view on it right now. And what you're looking at is the infrared satellite imagery. And this allows us to view the storm no matter if the sun is up or not. We can see this 24 hours a day. And this kind of picks up on the cloud top temperatures. In fact, that's exactly what it does. And the brighter colors of the yellows and the reds and the whites there indicate very, very cold cloud tops, which means healthy, strong thunderstorm growth that builds so high in the highest parts of the atmosphere that it's so cold that it gets picked up as cold temperatures there. So that is indi indicative of some very strong, healthy thunderstorm activity within Elsa right now as it's moving over the Windward Islands and entering the Caribbean. Here's the uh, recon flight from earlier this morning. And if you look closely, you can see that they did clock wind speed in the northern part of the wind field of nearly 90 miles per hour. And that was several hours ago. So it has undergone some intensification since then. We'll switch up the filter now. And this is water vapor imagery. And this allows us to see where the dry air is situated as well as the moist air. Of course, tropical systems, very moist. They don't need dry air. In fact, dry air is detrimental to storms keeping their strength or strengthening further. And we would see that on here indicated by some shades of orange or rust. And we're not really seeing that. So we don't have the dry air. We don't have the wind shear, but we do have substantially warm sea surface temperatures. In fact, throughout the entire basin, they are above average. And all you need is 80 degrees Fahrenheit or higher to supplement the physical processes needed for these hurricane engines to get going. And we have that. We're in the low to middle 80s out there right now, and it's only heading into warmer waters as it heads off to the west and northwest. So here's where it stands right now as of the one o'clock advisory. This is the latest storm track from the National Hurricane Center. No major changes in the overall track, but you can see there are watches and warnings up throughout much of the Caribbean islands as this is head, forecast ahead to the west northwest, still at a very good clip. 30 miles per hour or so over the next 24 hours before it starts to slow down a bit. But here we are tomorrow morning. You see it's already overshot its intensity estimates here. It's at 85 miles per hour now. It's forecast to be down to 80 tonight. I don't think we're going to see a weakening really on this storm. It'll probably maintain plateau 
or strengthen a little bit more. It heads through the Caribbean and then takes a pretty much a hard right hand turn to the north. If this is a stronger storm, this will likely sense the upper level steering mechanisms and turn to the north a little bit sooner. But right now that cone is influencing areas along the west coast of Florida. It does still include eastern portions of the coast of Florida as well and portions of the Gulf of Mexico. This is not set in stone. The cone of uncertainty gets larger the farther out you go because we are uncertain that far out. And I'm going to show you why here with the computer modeling. This is the spaghetti plots. Each line here is a different computer model, and sometimes we even throw the ensembles in here, which is the same model run several different times. We just kind of tweak it a little bit as we go out into the future. So good consensus here within the short term. Notice how they're all clustered together. And as you get farther out in time, there's divergence taking place. We start to see them split. Some go to the east of Florida. Some take it into the Gulf of Mexico. But the majority of so are in that cone of uncertainty, and that's why that cone is there and showing impacts possible to Florida as we get into early next week. So we still got several more days for this to change, and it will. If you've been watching hurricane forecasts here over the last couple of years with the active seasons, things change and sometimes drastically. So we'll have to watch this one closely. But there is an atmospheric steering mechanism in play that will likely shift this away from the Houston area. So we're not very concerned with this impacting our weather here. In fact, what's going to be bringing us unsettled weather this weekend is a cold front that's lurking off to the north. As this drops its way south, it's connected to a storm system well up in New England along the east coast. And as that whole system drops its way to the south southeast, it'll push Elsa away from us. At least that's the thinking as it is now. If everything lines up, things can certainly change. So I don't want to give you a false sense of security and say just don't disregard the forecast going here on out. Still got to stay on top of things and how things will evolve in the next couple of days here. But there is that front. There's a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity, but this should shield the eastern seaboard and a good chunk of the Gulf of Mexico if, in fact, it does stay with that timetable as it heads through the next couple days on that forecast track that I showed you. So here locally, our seven day forecast does have a lot of rain, unfortunately, in it heading through the long holiday weekend. Not what you want to hear. You want to get out and enjoy the long weekend when you're off of work. But looks like things will clear up just in time to head back to work next week with uh, shower chances dropping on down as we get into Saturday or excuse me, Monday and Tuesday down to 60 percent. Still that storm chance, although much lower by the time we get to the middle of next week. All right, that's the latest on the tropics for you there. I'm KJOU 11 meteorologist Tim Pandagis. We'll have another update for you with the latest NHC advisories coming up later this afternoon and into this evening with David.